And uh, you can please stay connected. Uh, we are going to continue now with two presentations here in place in Tel Aviv. By the way, since I see that Nir Barsila is still connected, I forgot to show his book. Uh, you know, I am trying to, yeah, here. to talk about the books of all the people. And this book is fantastic. Uh, you really need to read it. Age Later. And he dedicated it to me. He says, Hope you age much later, much, much later. So this is a fantastic book. Everybody needs to read it. So thank you, Nir, and thank you, Stephanie. And uh, 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 let's continue. And here, uh, now is my turn. Uh, you have also a quick presentation. And um, don't get scared, I'm very quick. And uh, here we are. Uh, in Tel Aviv, and I am from Spain and Latin America, so we are creating this initiative called Ibero Latin America. So, where we uh, put all the Spanish and Portuguese speaking countries together. Um, for dinner tonight, I like uh, phrases of Benjamin Franklin, and this is beautiful. In wine, there is wisdom. In beer, there, there is freedom. In water, there is bacteria. So, you know, you shouldn't drink water, but uh, beer or wine for freedom or wisdom. Another one of Benjamin Franklin is, in this world nothing can be said to be certain, except for death and taxes. And I disagree with him on the two accounts. So, anyway, uh, let me show you. I was born in Venezuela, my family is Spanish, Spanish-Jewish, my two last names are Spanish-Jewish. And my DNA sequence is mostly from the Middle East, uh, about uh, 2,000 years ago. It is interesting to sequence your genome, to know where you come from. Um, but anyway, so my parents left to Spain when Spain was a poor dictatorship under the fascist Francisco Franco. And they emigrated to Venezuela that was the wealthiest and the most democratic country in, in South America. Venezuela means uh, Piccola Venezia, the, the small Venice. And sadly now, Venezuela is very poor and very dictatorial, and actually the Jewish community has left uh, Venezuela, so most of them migrated to Israel or to the USA. I used to work with one of the Miss Universes, you know Venezuela has had the largest number of Miss Universes, uh, Irene Sainz, after she was Miss Universe, she uh, ran to be president. The last free election of Venezuela in 1998, I was her technology advisor. Uh, had she won, I would have been, uh, you know, the technology minister of Venezuela, but the beauty did not win, it was the beast, the beast that won. So a terrible condition in Venezuela. But anyway, in Latin America, Latin America is the, is the land of the future, the fountain of youth. When the Spanish came to Latin America, they were looking for the fountain of youth. But not just in Latin America, and Venezuela is the land of El Dorado, you probably have heard of that, they thought that El Dorado was in South America. Uh, but uh, longevity has been the uh, basic interest of humanity since the beginning. Uh, almost 5,000 years ago, the first book ever written by humans, the Epic of Gilgamesh, is about longevity. Or uh, here in the South, Egypt, uh, the Book of the Death, actually was the book about eternal life. Or the Chinese, the Emperor King Shi Huang of the Terracotta Army, he was also looking for uh, immortality. Sadly, they did not have the technology. In the holy books, also like in the Bible, or in the Bhagavad Gita, or so on and so forth, they talk about immortality and that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I am an engineer from the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. In a previous life, I was in the energy sector. Now, I am in the longevity sector. And I also lead with the Millennium Project that began as the futuristic part of the United Nations, all the Ibero-American team, Spain, Portugal, plus all of Latin America, with the trends about the future. We published a book about Latin America in the year 2030. I had the pleasure to present it in Davos, uh, the World Economic Forum, and we talk in one scenario about uh, immortality actually. So this is one of uh, four scenarios that we have in, uh, in the next 10 years, 20 years, including longevity. Um, I was with the Nobel uh, uh, Literature Prize, Mario Vargas Llosa, who is very interested in immortality. He's writing a book about immortality. So very interested that our ideas are getting into the mainstream, even with Nobel laureates. And uh, we just published with the Millennium Project this is a scenario about the year 2050 where people are uh, indefinitely young. Indefinitely young. 
So this is very interesting and we are collaborating with the United Nations for the first summit of the future in New York next year. The first summit of the future will be in September 2024 and we are going to take these ideas to the United Nations. But anyway, talking about uh, um, uh, what I'm doing, uh, five years ago I got together with another fantastic scientist, David Wood, who is a doctor from uh, Cambridge University and he developed the first uh, intelligent system for telephones, he developed Symbian, that was bought by Nokia. And uh, we decided that the biggest problem of humanity is longevity, aging and death. Uh, the problem obviously is there might be wars, terrorism, climate change, pollution, but the biggest, biggest thing is aging. And all of us are aging. And all of us are going to die unless we kill death before death kills us. So, we published a fantastic book, I'm very proud, because it was simultaneously number one and five in the Spanish-speaking world, one in paper, five in the Kindle, and then um, we are actually yeah, are yeah. Today, the royalties of the book. Uh, Nir, I think I heard you? Yeah. No, okay. So anyway, we are donating uh, the royalties uh, of this edition to the Sense Research Foundation, where Aubrey de Grey is, because Aubrey de Grey wrote the prologue of the book, and to a foundation in Spain. Yes. A foundation in Spain. Um, uh, Spain, this is important because Spain actually is the second largest big country uh, with uh, um, life expectancy, with the biggest life expectancy after Japan. Of course, there are other smaller countries, including Monaco uh, and uh, Hong Kong, that have higher life expectancies, but they are kind of small. Uh, so, I actually, because of these ideas, I created a political movement in Spain and I ran for the European Parliament. And my initiative, my party, my group was called Miel. Miel, which means honey, honey in Spanish. And the initials are Movimiento Independiente Euro Latino. It was the Europeans and the Latin people uh, taking the ideas of longevity. And I was very happy to be the first person in Spain taking this to politics. Uh, it was a quick campaign and I got 7,000 votes in my home city, Madrid. And I can tell you, I don't know, 7,000 people in Madrid. So I'm really happy that the ideas are basically moving forward, uh, even um, uh, without knowing these ideas. In Germany, there is also a, a, a party, a political party, taking this idea. And the, they are also doing very well, uh, just beginning, but doing well. My idea was to take uh, Spain from non plus ultra. Spain was called non plus ultra because the Roman Empire finished in Spain. There was nothing beyond Spain. Nothing beyond. So that was non plus ultra. But then when um, Spain discovered America, or rediscovered America, the logo of Spain was changed to plus ultra, far beyond. My goal is that Spain becomes the country of Vita plus ultra, life far beyond. Because Spain is very advanced actually in longevity, as you will see. Well, my book after Spanish came out in Portuguese, was an uh, international bestseller in French, even in Russia. In Russia it came in two different editions and the Russians changed the title. It's not Death Must Die, I mean uh, the Death of Death. In Russian is Death Must Die. Very Russian style. <laughs> death Must Die. Uh, my book is also in Chinese, in Turkish, in German. Actually I'm very proud that um, uh, uh, Bjorn Schumacher, who will be speaking tomorrow, he wrote the he wrote epilogue. The, 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 the epilogue of my book in, um, in German, the German edition. So my book is an international bestseller in, in all these languages coming up. In China, the government of China is published in my book because China is going through a demographic implosion. Implosion. China is terrified that this is big China. This year is the end of China. China begins declining as of now. The population will decrease to less than half by the end of the century and it will be take, overtaken not only by, by India, but also by Nigeria. And the Chinese are very worried, not just by India, but also uh, Nigeria and other countries catching up. So the government of China decided to publish my book because they wanted a bestseller that was not written by an American, which is interesting, geopolitics, global geopolitics. Anyway, so my book is coming out in English. These are the three covers that Springer, uh, the top scientific publisher, um, gave me. So you can vote for them and tell me later which one you like the best. Uh, I did also with uh, the longevity dividend. The longevity dividend is very important because we can quantify 
the positive <coughs> economic effect of living longer, healthier uh, yeah, uh, lives. In fact, if you look at this study written by three top scientists, Andrew School from London School of Economics, Martin Ellison from Oxford University, and David Sinclair from Harvard, a biology and two economists, and they come up with this incredible number, $367 trillion in 10 years. This is almost impossible to imagine in our minds, I think. But so that you see the positive economic impact. And this was published in Nature Aging, which is a fantastic new publication uh, from Nature just about aging. So Aubrey de Grey, my dear friend, that I, I translated his book in Spanish, and I showed before, um, it's called, here it is again, uh, El Fin del Envejecimiento. Um, in this book, when he published it, actually before, he was called a charlatan by my university. I was very upset that MIT, the MIT Technology Review, said that uh, Aubrey de Grey, uh, you know, didn't know what he was doing, that this was impossible. Well, 14 years later, in 2019, MIT Technology Review, the same publication, uh, said that actually he was right. Old age is over, if you want it. So, look at the dramatic change of public opinion, even in MIT. Yeah. Or my friend, um, Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil, who talks about the three bridges to immortality. Also, I have translated his books into Spanish, so that we popularize these ideas in Latin America and Spain. Um, this is an incredibly growing ecosystem, actually. Uh, Dmitry Kaminsky talked about that, he showed it. And I'm so happy uh, to be also reviewing and recommending these fantastic books that I quote extensively in my book. All these reports are the best on all these new uh, developments, this growing ecosystem. It's really fantastic and also he does regional analysis, uh, technology analysis, so it is the best. And this industry is growing from millions to billions to trillions. So I don't know what you do and I don't care. If you are not into longevity, you are out of the game. Uh, now, even governments, you probably know Saudi Arabia, it was mentioned, Evolution Foundation. Saudi Arabia has launched this foundation investing for the next two decades at least $1 billion, and I think it will be more soon. Uh, this is the Evolution Foundation, as you heard. Uh, they are going to finance a third of a uh, near Marseille state study. But it was also in Dubai. I was in the most incredible building, as they say, in the Emirates, the Museum of the Future. I organized a session about immortality. Welcome to Everlasting Life. And I had the pleasure to be with two incredible, uh, well-known, respected people, James Kirkland from the Mayo Clinic in the USA and Alex Shabonkov from In Silicon Medicine. And we were talking about the purposes of everlasting life in the Emirates. Actually, the Emirates are creating something similar to the Evolution Foundation because they don't want to stay behind Saudi Arabia. And then uh, last year, we invited to Spain, to Madrid. We gave an award to Shemya Yamanaka, Nobel Prize in uh, Medicine and Physiology, as you know, for discovering rejuvenating a cell is possible. So we are trying to start with Shinya Yamanaka and with Jet Bezos, the fifth operation base of Altos Labs in Spain. You know, there are four bases, two in California, San Diego and San Francisco, one in the United Kingdom in Cambridge, and one in Kyoto University, where he's located. Because they began with 25 scientists in Altos. Out of those 25 scientists, five are Spanish. It's absolutely amazing. After the USA, the largest number of scientists are Spanish. That is why we want to create a center in Spain, in Madrid. Uh, hopefully, next year, we will have great news for the next conference. Why? Because Ibero-America is big, big. Linguistically, um, you know, there are already close to 600 billion Spanish speakers and 300 billion uh, Portuguese speakers. If you add both Spanish and Portuguese, which are mutually comprehensible, we understand 99% of each other, we basically are reaching 1 billion people. So this is a big, big market. Um, we have a very old society, as you can see on the top right, Sociedad Española de Medicina anti envejecimiento y Longevidad, which has hundreds of medical doctors affiliated, uh, and it began in the year 2000. So this is a very established longevity, anti-aging uh, scientific society. But not only in Spain, we have some like in, uh, 
in very small, like in my country still we do have a, an academy, a virtual academy also, and uh, we are collaborating with the Healthy Longevity Medicine Society that Evelyn Bishop will talk about tomorrow as well, she is the, the vice president. And we just organized the 10th Ibero-American uh, Congress on Medicina y anti <laughs> for a president who will declare aging as a disease. I was talking to the team of President Najib Bukele in El Salvador because he's kind of crazy and he is willing to do almost anything. As, as you probably know last year he declared Bitcoin currency in El Salvador. Unfortunately he did it at the wrong time uh, so he took the country into bankruptcy but when he recovers, if Bitcoin recovers, we might declare in El Salvador aging as a disease, but a curable disease. This will change the game if we do this in El Salvador. In any way, we are talking to two other governments, small governments, uh, Costa Rica and Panama. So maybe Panama, Costa Rica or El Salvador by next year will declare aging as a disease. And we are working with Afro longevity also. In Africa, Africa. <coughs> in fact, Tamara, why don't you stand up so people look at you? You see the green girl? The green girl, she's coming from Johannesburg, from South Africa. And she is part of the Afro Longevity team. Of the votes, 
The last one, 30% of the votes, and the middle one, 20%. And 10%? Yeah, it would be the first one. But look, in, in Russia, actually, in Russia, the two covers came simultaneously, and the black one sells 70% more than the white one. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so the book, the book will come out uh, by the end of June, the first week of July. Oh, by the way, some beautiful people here have written fantastic quotes in the book, like uh, you all heard Fiona Miller this morning. Fiona wrote a beautiful, beautiful quote. Uh, as I said also, Professor Bjorn Schumacher uh, wrote even the epilogue of the book in, uh, in German. And then um, Aubrey de Grey wrote the introduction, the preface, and then also Evelyn Bishop has written a beautiful quote, and many other people, including George Church, and uh, Ray Kurzweil, and Michio Kaku. Michio Kaku is my favorite physicist, and he believes in immortality. Anyway, so thank you for the question, and uh, now let's continue with the final presentation from a friend that has come from Brussels. Um, he is also a very prolific writer, advisor, uh, he's a, a lawyer, but he's working on longevity issues dedicated, and also he has a foundation called Hills in, in Brussels. And he has published this fantastic book, which I also quote, Esion Arrête de Vieillir, which means, if we stop aging. So, so uh, welcome to Didier. Didier.